people, what is up today? Pastor G. Lady T. <laughs> we came on in. Yeah, we came on in this thing. We're in the house. We're excited about God's goodness, God's grace. Uh, God's everything to us is so uh, incredible. We're living the, the blessed life, which is the best life. I'm excited about the opportunity to be alive. And I do call it the opportunity to be alive mm. because many are breathing and not alive. I am thankful to God that I can recognize his goodness. And my, I have, a, 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 as I say, a reasonable portion of my health and strength. And so for those causes, I'm very excited. Blessings to you, though. Blessings to, blessings to you. Uh, in this, um, what I believe is a celebration season, I believe that we are, we are celebrating uh, or, or recognizing that it's time to celebrate based off the information and revelation that God is giving to his people right now. Uh, the basics, the basis of this revelation is that you are loved by God mm -hmm. and ain't nothing nobody can do about it. You are loved by your father in heaven. You are uh, always, always, will always, always be on his mind. Forever on his mind. Forever on his mind. Uh, uh, you couldn't uh, get, you couldn't run out of the mind of God no matter what you've done. He's already covered it. Interesting. That is such an interesting thing. I am covered by God. I am covered by the one that loved. The lover of my soul continues to love me. Even when I don't love myself, he loves me. Incredible. What a blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. You are loved. Now, I'm, 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 I keep pushing this. Thank you so much, Queenie Griffin, for being in the house. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, I am keep pushing this because uh, this is the foundation by which everything that you hear should be uh, cultivated. This It comes into your spirit. There's, there's, the ground has got to be right for the seed to actually go in and to reproduce. Many times what we're experiencing is this thing of us not uh, being able to receive God's word on the proper ground. Now, I have to have the right ground to receive this word. If I have ground that is stony because of, of, of the, my heart has become hardened because of experiences, uh, and then I, I don't properly uh, believe what I'm hearing, things my, my seed fall on shallow ground, what happens? What happens? What happens? This means that the seed won't go in and then recreate. And we can't have that happen in this season because God is dropping too many seeds. It's not that you have the lack of revelation or God's word. It's the ground that this word encounters it won't uh, allow it to sink in and so many times what the enemy does he causes us to hear things so many times until, until we take it for granted mm -hmm. and so we like i heard that before and so what we do then we tend to think it's going to be the same thing that it was before and that's not the truth in this season god is giving you new revelation because he want to give you the actual manifestation this time you're living in the right time thanks so much my sister sheila's in the house of course, Moms is here. Uh, Jackie Dyer is in the house. Thank you guys. Now, do me a favor. If you will, start sharing. Start sharing me. We got a very interesting topic today. Mm -hmm. Interesting topic. And before I jump in, I'm going to let her say something. Our topic today. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. It's called Full Coverage Assurance. Full Coverage. I didn't say insurance. I know you're paying insurance full coverage. You got your kids on that's kind of high. Listen, I want your kids to be on this policy too. But it's called full coverage assurance. Your whole house is covered. You, This is called uh, your bundling. This is the, 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 talking about the bundling. I'm putting everything in my world inside this full coverage assurance. We're going to talk about that today. Share, share me, share me, share me. Go ahead. This is going to be a very I'm an heir of salvation. Yes. Purchased by God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Yes. Blessed assurance. That's all. Yes. <laughs> it's just blessed. blessed it's so assurance. blessed to know that. Can you see the Lord? Purchased by God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. 
Amen. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. We're just going to listen to a, a concert. Thank you so much. Uh, 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 Minister Von Talley, thank you so much. Evie Cook, thank you so much for being in the yeah. house. Pastor Nolan, blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings. Today, it is called Full Coverage Assurance. I want you to know right now, without a doubt, you are completely covered by God. Listen yes. to me. Completely covered by God. I've been teaching the entire week of last week that the route to the palace, the road to the palace is a rough road, rough route. Sometimes we get in 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 in, in journey to these places that God has promised. We start getting hit and get hit with things. Mm -hmm. And now we want to relent because we're getting hit. And and, and and so what we have to understand when we go on a vacation and we have chosen to drive the vacation, mm -hmm. we usually take a spare tire. Yeah. Because perhaps in the journey, I might experience some flats. Mm. And so if I do, it's okay. Because I've taken the, the, the necessary, I did the due diligence just in case something happened. I don't stop the vacation because mm -hmm. I had a flat. Mm -hmm. So you cannot relent in your spiritual journey just because you had a couple of things Come happen on. in your life. You got to mm -hmm. continue. And with your full coverage now, talking natural insurance... You got a package in there that called roadside assistance. Okay. You can call it in and they'll come in and swoop in. Well, in this full coverage assurance, God says you got roadside assistance. As a matter of fact, it, it, we, we talked about how he is the Lord of heaven's army. There's a there's an army that is waiting to assist you. If you would be persistent, they assist if you would persist. If you decide I'm going to keep going, they are there to assist you. Jesus did in the garden when he was on the extreme pressure, sweat, blood, mm -hmm. because he's looking at what he's got to face. And it's difficult that even though he knew before that this is going to be difficult, he's sweating blood and saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And he's praying and said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. I'm, I've had some roadblocks and it's difficult. If it be your will, let this cup. And so now he prays again. He didn't get an answer from the father. Many of you are in journey. You're praying and there's no answer from your dad. Your dad have not said anything. And so sometimes if you're not careful and you don't have full understanding, you might think your dad is ignoring you. Mm -hmm. It's not actually he's ignoring you. He's saying to you, I think you're mature enough to handle this now. And so Jesus prayed again and he said, Father, listen, listen, listen. I know what I, I came to do. I know uh, I, I got a whole list of things that will happen in the package of my calling. I'm looking at it and I'm saying, hey, look. I know it's a good thing, it's a good purpose, it's a good will, but and I'm not disputing if that's the case. I'm just saying if 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 you can you can you can you try another way to get let's let's do something else. And then he didn't hear an answer from the father, and so he says this. He says, nevertheless, yes. nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, nevertheless, but your will yes. be done. And then the Bible says next verse he get roadside assistance. Mm -hmm. There's an angel that comes, shows up and say, let me strengthen you because now you just agree to what God said about you. Even though it's difficult, you agree. Let's give you some sister. There, there appeared an angel to strengthen him for the journey. Yeah. If you will be persistent and say yes to the call, there's going to be roadside assistance in this life of yours that's going to strengthen you. The father is not ignoring you. He's just saying to you that you're going to come to your senses. All right. You're going to realize that you are packed with the power that it takes to go farther. Mm -hmm. And so this is called full coverage assurance even though in your natural life you got full coverage insurance and every advantage in your natural life because of the price has that you are paying or has been paid there are some perks in this journey I want you to know what these perks are mm -hmm. I want you to know that he's got you the Lord of heaven's army is standing behind you saying, I'm here. And we called it last week called the secret service. You got <laughs> secret service at your disposal. Yes. Let's expose what is at your disposal. Thank you, Bishop Fred Harris. Thank you so much. Linda Brown, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, let's get into Katrina Robinson. Blessings, 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 blessings. Full coverage assurance. Full coverage assurance. Thank you so much, Raquel Moore. Thank you so much, Lisa Ray Lucas. Now, watch this. I want to I preface a passage of scripture because, listen, 
just because in journey to greatness, the road to the palace is always rough. Go ahead and write that in your psyche. What God has promised me is bigger than me, and it's going to be a challenge for me to get there. But if I stay persistent, God will assist. If I stay persistent, God will assist me. He's never going to leave me in or for, nor forsake me. Even when I run into the times that it's very difficult, I don't know how I'm going to make it to the next level. God says he's going to be there to assist you. If you can say, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Because yes. I'm in a tough place right now. Nevertheless, people are talking about me. People are trying to talk me out of it. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. What happens? What happens? He says, listen to me. Listen to me very close. He says, listen to what Jesus said in the text. He says, nevertheless. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Listen to what Jesus said. Apply it to your own life. Nevertheless, if you do God's will, you'll never settle for less again. Never again. Never again. And so you got to get this. Uh, Psalms chapter 91, full coverage assurance. You got to be sure. You're on point with God. He assured you that he's going to get you to where he promised you. I got to live on the promises of God. If he told me, he's going to do it. If you will, please share me. Please share me. Please share me. Please share me today. I need to encourage some people right now. Yeah. No matter what your ranking is in the organization, you need encouragement. Yes, yes. No yes. matter what. Now, the higher you go in your organization, the more encouragement you need. Okay. You just need it. You just need more grace. And I want to I want to I want to I want to uh, uh really encourage today. Now, I just said Psalms 91. Here's what happens when I call out a passage of scripture. It's the familiar passage of scripture. And so sometimes what the enemy does say, you already know that. Now, now, now you can go back to work now because he's in the, he's about to say what you already know. Mm. Don't make that mistake today. Don't make that mistake today. Let me uh let me open this up. This is Psalms uh 91. Woo! Thank you, Pastor Angela. Thank you, Pastor Marissa. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you guys. Katrina Roberts, thank you so much for being at Psalms chapter 91. Thank you so much, Pastor Marissa, for putting that address in there tonight, 6 30 p.m. Now watch this. Psalms 91. Psalms 91. I want to unpack something today. I already warned the first lady. I said, now this is gonna go somewhere. We might go a little heavy today, but here's something that is resonating in my spirit, and I'm coming from the book, man. All right. Now here it is. Psalms 91 says this. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place. Remember, remember, we're talking full coverage assurance. I know you got insurance, but you're so proud of your full coverage insurance. You got roadside assistance. You got a lot of things that happen. It's something you break down and you got something happening. You're going to do it. But listen to this. You got full coverage assurance from the one that is the creator of heaven and earth. Listen to me. He says, he that dwelleth in the secret place. Now listen to what he just said. In the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now we need to unpack that because I need you to see this very clearly now. Listen to me. He that dwelleth in the secret place. In the secret place. Now listen to it. In the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow Ooh. of the Almighty. My God, oh, assurance. God. Yes. This is, <laughs> this wow. is, now, 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 now. It says secret place. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a secret place that if if, if 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 something is a secret, it automatically suggests from just that notion that everybody ought not to know where that is. Intimacy. 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 My secrets. Not secrets. Come it's on. A secret place. Everybody should not have a key to that place. Everybody has, should not have free entry to that place. Hear me now. Hear me now. It's a secret place. Everybody can't just walk into this place. Mm. If your secret place is a place that people can find you at constantly, they know where to locate you at, then it's not a secret any longer. Ta da. So, so, so you might not be seeing what you think you ought to receive because you ain't living in a secret place. This is a place that when you got some goods and you know it's good, you, you tell everybody that you want to make privy to the goods. Listen now, this is not for everybody. This is secret now. So now, now he that abided in the secret place. The secret place, now listen to me. It's a place that most people don't know where you are. There are times that they shouldn't be able to locate you. They should not be able to locate you. Listen to me. 
He that dwelleth in that secret place. There are times that you have to fall back. And people, even the closest confidants, can't find you at this time. Because I'm in a place that God has hidden me. Mm. Some of you need to be hid right now. Because there's some things that you're going through you need to make a decision on. And you got people that are trying to influence the decision. You got, you got a crucial decision to make about a thing and you can't make it because the people that you trust the most and got the most influence in your life mm -hmm. has got access to you and they're speaking mm -hmm. in your ear and God says, I need you to dwell in a secret place. They shouldn't have access. They, they should not even be able to locate you in mm -hmm. these moments. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about full coverage. Come on, sure. come on. I'm trying to open up the package, what the package is presented right here. They shouldn't be able to talk to you right now because you are in a place that you got one audience member. Mm -hmm. And you Ooh, need to an have audience a, of one. Audience of one. You need mm. to have conversation with him. I'm talking to all of y'all. I'm not talking to the special church going people. Mm. I'm talking to people that right now are in a dilemma. And you need an answer. Mm. But you have had the same people in your space. And insanity suggests that if you have the same, doing the same thing, hearing the same thing, and expecting a different result, you have got a problem. Mm -hmm. Many of you are right now irritated. Let me tell you what your irritation is. Your irritation is that God has created such an incredible person mm -hmm. called you and ordained you for such incredible uh, moments. And you keep putting yourself in the box of normalcy. Mm -hmm. your, nothing is secret about your plan. You tell everybody. And then you got these special groups that you tell. Well, there's an enemy inside the special group. And now you're irritated because I can't lunch outside of this. And I know I'm bigger than this. And why is it that my plans are always exposed when I only got secret people in this place? It's telling you that somebody in your space, somebody in your space, somebody in your space, he says, I'm bringing you to a secret place because not even the, those people are going to be able to come into this mm. place. If you're ready for the full coverage assurance, he says, he that dwelleth in the secret place. Now, here's what is important about the secret place. I got to seek the secret. <laughs> I, I, you see, if I have been wounded by rejection in my entire life, I don't seek secret place. I don't want to secret place. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because then I got an audience of one. But if I have built up a, a crowd uh, of people that have accepted me, finally I got a people that allow me to be in their group because I don't know who I am. I won't seek the secret because that means that I'm going to have to leave out the people that's giving me my identity. Mm -hmm. And I need people in my life, Pastor, because I, you don't understand. My whole life, I tried to be a part, and I was rejected. And now you're telling me, now that they say, but it's too expensive for you. Mm -hmm. You're paying too much to remain in the crowd. Your dues for being inside the crowd is way too high for you to pay. You are being depleted in emotions. You are being depleted in finances. You are being depleted in several areas of your life because you don't have no identity that only comes when I visit the secret place where I shut off everybody else's noise and hear what only God is saying to me so that he can redefine me. I am who I am, but I'm missing because I don't know the extent of it in my information, what God created. I keep hearing what they say. And so if I keep hearing what they say, I keep repeating who they are. Cloning is illegal. <laughs> cloning is illegal. You know why? And the penalty of the illegalness of cloning is that you are irritated right now. You got something in you that you never allowed God to tell you what it was in truth. You heard what they said. You heard what the God representation in your mind said to you, but you never visit God's secret place so he can tell you, oh, this is who you are emphatically. <laughs> and if you don't do yourself the, 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 the privilege and the honor and, and to, to go to that secret place, and let him speak to you. Life will never be maximized. So he that dwell in the secret place. So I got to seek the secret. I got to see it as the place that I need to be to hear from God. The only one that can really define who I am. And the magnitude of that thing. So I got to seek the secret. Now, this is Psalms uh, chapter 91. I need to explain something for those of you that are uh, 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 biblical uh, uh, seekers and want to be uh, uh, study the scripture. Let me share, share a secret to a uh, study. This is interesting. Anytime we read Psalms, the first person come to mind is David. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. I'm showing you a key and this is going to be a blessing to you. The first person that comes to mind is David. When we think, speak of Psalms, we think about David. Now watch this. When I think of he that dwells in a secret place, if I think David, 
then I will look at the life of David and I will apply this text to the life of David. This is what I got to understand about Psalm 91. If you are reading it from the King James Version or any other Bible, it does not have an inscription. Most Psalms have an inscription at the top to identify mm -hmm. or to say a Psalms of. But Psalms 91 have, have no uh, identity at the top. Now, this is interesting because I'm going to show you how it changes the entire narrative and how it blesses your life. Now, since this one doesn't have it, you know, this is just start, he that dwelleth in the secret place. Whose psalm is it? Well, here's the rule to interpretation of scripture, okay. especially when it comes to the psalm. It is uh, ascribed to the last author of the last chapter. Mm -hmm. That's how you know whom this work belonged to. If you don't see no title, you have to go by rule to the last author okay. of the last chapter in psalm. And so once we discover that, now we go back to 90, Psalms 90. Here we see that it says a prayer of Moses, wow. the man of God. Now we know that Psalms 91 is also a continuation of a narrative built by Moses. Mm. It changes the entire picture. Everything. Never changes, changes the entire picture now. Now we see that Psalms 91 is written by Moses. Even though David had a dynamic life, but we got to make sure when we do the context, we're putting the right context to the right scripture. This is so important in scriptorial study. This is where we get true revelation because God is only obligated to manifest what is truth. And if I don't have truth, he's not obligated to manifest. People have lived this their entire life. So, so knowing, I mean, that's, I never knew. Yes. So just even knowing that that was written by Moses, who's in the wilderness, probably Changes at that the time. dynamics. He's in the wilderness, and he's still seeing that yes. he's in the secret place of the most high. There you go. He knows that in this wilderness experience, I have full coverage assurance. Now, let's dig into the text. Now, the narratives have changed, right? Now, you don't see David. You see Moses. Now, let's build this text from a Moses context or a Moses dynamic. Now, watch this. He that dwelleth in the secret place, that means that I got to seek the secret place. I got to know that this is the place that I shut off everybody else. Now, watch this. In my heart, he's got to be single, right? I got to take away from the sectional. Some people are taking the section out and went to a love seat. Let me take out the love seat. I'm going down to a comforter. One seat in here. That's me and God. I'm sitting here in the presence of God listening to him. Now, stay with me now. So, here's the Moses narrative to Psalms 91. Not David. This is not David. This is Moses. So, Moses prays in Psalms 90. Listen to the prayer of Moses. Listen to he says, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Listen, my dwelling place in all generations. Now let's go to Psalms 91 that have no title in scripture and let's, let's place Moses in the context. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High <laughs> shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now let me share with you why this is so interesting when I discovered that this is Moses as opposed to David. Now I got a secret, a, a, a secret, secret place. Watch this. The, ch the narratives have changed. Listen to what the narrative began to be now. If Moses is talking about a secret place, then he's definitely talking about what God told him to build in secret. Mm -hmm. What is that? That's called the Ark of the Covenant. Wow. <laughs> That's called the Ark. So, so, so now Moses is building a picture. Now we're seeing a picture in our mind of a different narrative. So if Moses is talking about a secret place, he's definitely talking about the Ark where there's a place called the Holy of Holies, mm -hmm. which was the most secret of places. And he says, he that dwelleth in the secret place. Now, this is interesting because now this is called visitation time. Mm -hmm. And he says, only certain people were privy to the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. Only certain people. Everybody can't go into this place. This is the one <laughs> that has been prepared. You have to prepare yourself to go and you got to seek the secret because everybody, we've been trying to drag people into the secret place that are not by who uh, 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 be there. supposed to be there. And the rule is if you go into this secret place, the holies of holy, and you have not been qualified, Ooh. there's going to be some dying. Drag, yeah. yeah, they're going to have to 
tie a rope to drag you out. Many people you have been putting in jeopardy because you're trying to bring them into Ugh. this secret place and they are not supposed to be able to go in there with you. And you didn't tie a rope around their legs so you could pull them out. Yeah, you're causing chaos in the life of people just because you're attaching to them because you don't want to be alone. Ooh, love you don't want to be by yourself. I need people in my life. I don't care how detrimental they are to my life and I don't care how much I'm killing them. I'm trying to pull them into a secret place and God is trying to get me there because he's trying to show me something. He that dwelleth in the secret place. So here's the Moses narrative again. Again, if there's a secret place, Moses was instructed by God. This is Exodus chapter 25. He says, you're going to have to build me a place called secret. And if you build this properly and follow my directions, listen to me, listen to me. I'm going to tell you about this secret place. He says, you're going to be able to find me there. Now watch this. This is interesting. Interesting. This is so interesting. I cannot leave this alone. You got to hear it. This is called the holies of holies. It's where the presence of God dwell. He gave them a distinct uh, a, a picture of what he wanted to build. He says, I need you to build this mercy seat in this secret place where two cherubims will be over. It's the, the angels where I am going to visit you at. And this is the place where you find mercy. Hear me now. This is the place where you find mercy. This is the place where you find mercy. Please hear me. Don't drag people into this secret place because you're going to cause death in their life. Everybody can't go to this place. This is where you got the full coverage assurance at, right here in this place. You got to go alone. You got to visit this by yourself. You have been the one that God's been tugging to bring there. Mm. It's your secret place. This is where you abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The angels are there. Mm. The presence of God there. It's the mercy seat there. You have to come there. You have to come there because this is the place that you find uh, 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 your grace and mercy. Now, watch this. I, I, I need to, I need to uh, 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 implement one other point on this. Now, we have been taught in our lives that we run to this place when we are in trouble. Listen to me now. I'm, I'm going to break down some sacred cows. All right. We are taught in life that we run. Thank you, Apostle John Harris. We are to run to this place when we are in trouble. And so I didn't seek the secret place until I was in trouble. Mm. Now watch this. Here's Moses again. Here's how we discover who writes a psalm. If there's no inscription on the psalm, it is taught in biblical study that the author of the past psalm is ascribed the next psalm if it has no uh, identification. So now we know it's not David. David, it's Moses that's actually writing about the wilderness experience. And now we are taught when we're in trouble, run to the secret place. Mm -hmm. But Moses just said, he that dwelleth, he that has made his home, <laughs> he that has made his habitation in the secret place. So that means that if the secret place, I got to pre-qualify, the priest had to pre-qualify before he went to the secret place. I've got to always have my life up at a standard where I can live there and not just run there when I'm in mm. trouble. Listen to me. Now, if you want the full coverage assurance, here it is. We're not talking full coverage insurance. That's a beautiful thing. And you got a beautiful package in your full coverage insurance. But we're talking about full coverage assurance. You got privileges here if you meet the qualifications. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. And so and throughout life, we're taught to run there when we in trouble. But Moses said, I need you to think about living there. Mm -hmm. This is not a sometime thing. This is not God's desire to be with you sometime. This is God's desire to dwell with Come you. Come on. <laughs> and also Moses says in the 90, 90 chapter, he says, the Lord is our dwelling place. I should be in him constant. Now listen to this. So, so, so. Now if I'm looking at the Moses narrative again, mm -hmm. I'm discovering something God told him to build this secret place because I'm going to visit you there. I'm going to constantly, my presence is in this secret place. He says, now if you do it, you're going to be able to dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Moses narrative again. When I thought about this, here's something that came to mind that really was interesting to me. The shadow of the Almighty. My, mm -hmm. he's now in the Moses narrative as opposed to David's narrative. In the Moses narrative, he's now talking about a pillar of cloud by day, <laughs> the pillar of fire by night. Ugh. Listen to the narrative. <laughs> Listen to the text. Listen to Moses' content. He's talking about a under the shadow. That means that there is a pillar of uh -huh. cloud uh -huh. by day. 
Because <laughs> a shadow is cast. Yes, yes. Now watch this. This thing would protect you. It would guide you, lead you, and protect you. This, this is the shadow that he's talking about. He says, you're going to dwell under this. Now, Israel in, in, in transit from bondage to freedom and deliverance into a promised life, they had a shadow, mm -hmm. a cloud by day, <laughs> a pillar of fire by night. And he says, I will constantly be with you. I will constantly be, be with you. You will never. Now, watch this. Moses says that we should abide there. We should live there. The secret place is not a place that we go every now and then or run to. That's why we read in uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 4, verse number 16. It says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Did you know God's throne was the throne of grace? Mm. Did you know God's throne will always be the throne of grace? Now, in the, in, in the tabernacle, there's a thing called the mercy seat. Where we did sacrifice on mercy and then he forgave Israel of, of the sins, past sins. Now, he says, let us come boldly to, from the, the mercy throne to the throne of grace because of Jesus. Mercy, now listen, when the, when, the, when the priest would go into the holies of holies, they would put blood on the mercy seat mm -hmm. and God would forgive sins past. Mm -hmm. Now, that's mercy. Mercy is that you don't be consumed by the things that you should be consumed by. Mm -hmm. So, grace is a whole other picture. Grace is a picture that it's not just God saving you from your past. Grace is God giving you a future. <laughs> so when Jesus comes, listen to it, I always say this because it's interesting. Because the rule of the holies of holies and the priests come in is that you take a lamb without spot or wrinkle into the place called holies of holies. You take that blood, you cut his throat, uh, you put the blood on the mercy seat, then the sin of uh, the nation are forgiven. All past sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. Now that's interesting because that's the rule to forgiveness was take an unspotted lamb into the holies of holies, uh, uh, sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat, boom, everything is forgiven. But now we look at the narrative of our Christ, who is the perfect lamb, uh, but the text says you got to be without spot or wrinkle. But the Bible says in Isaiah that our our, our unspotted lamb visage was marred beyond uh, uh uh, uh, comparison. You couldn't even notice who he was because he would beat so bad. When he went to the cross, who was the sacrificial lamb, he went to the cross, beat, battered. Uh, 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 do you get the picture? Now, here's the key to forgiveness being implemented in Moses' day, which was a type of shadow of things come. It was take an unspotted lamb, cut the throat, put the blood on the mercy seat, boom, you are forgiven. But here it is, our lamb, when he goes to the cross, same scenario because Moses was a shadow come, he was beaten beyond come. His visage was marred. You didn't know who it was. Why is it that if it only takes a non-spotted lamb dying for sins to be forgiven, all your sins to be forgiven, why would our lamb be beaten? Mm. Well, here's the reason why. Because not only did he want to go in and do a perfect work as a spotted lamb to have God forgive you for your past infractions, he says, by my stripes you are Heal. So every stripe I took, I was every time I was beaten, I'm not paying for your past. I am buying your future. Mm -hmm. And so now God's throne don't just it, it, as it was in tabernacle, which was a shadow of things come. It's not just a mercy seat that you're not consumed by the things that you should be consumed by. Now it's a throne of grace that you get the things that you don't deserve. That's why the Bible says now Hebrews 4 6 said, We should come to the throne of grace. So look at this. Let us boldly come unto the throne of grace. And obtain mercy. Mm -hmm. So if you get to the grace place, you're going to have mercy. Now watch this. Here's what I got to understand about mercy. Mercy is a component of grace. Ooh, this powerful. Because if grace want you, he's going to send mercy out to rescue you. Mm -hmm. When mercy grabs you, it's going to pull you back to the grace ship. <laughs> to take you to safety. So watch this. That's why we should come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help win. When I'm perfect, no. In the time of need. Here it is. He that dwelleth in this secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Are y'all still here with me? And so he says this. He says this. He says, if I'm talking shadow, I'm talking a pillar by day, a pillar of fire. By night, I'm always there. So now look at here. Here we are. Here we are. We are under a shadow. We are to abide there. In other words, not just run there. We are to live under this shadow. It's called full coverage assurance. Now, in this shadow, we discover this pillar of cloud. Now, Exodus, I want to read this. Exodus 13 suggests uh, it's a picture. Here's what is a picture of number one. God is faithful. Hmm. The pillar of cloud is a picture of God being faithful, number one. Number two, it's God's patience. And number three, it's God's protection. 
Now let's deal with this number one. It's God's faithfulness. This is Exodus chapter 13, verse 21. I'm still talking about he that dwelleth in a secret place. You got full coverage assurance. He's going to send things to protect you and to lead you and to guide you. It's called the pillar of cloud. Now watch this, watch this. It's God's protection. It's God's faithfulness. It's God's patience. Now let's deal with the faithfulness of God. Exodus chapter 13, verse 21 and 22. Now check this out. It says, And the Lord went before them by a pillar and a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. Now watch this. And by night and a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Interesting. Now watch the 22nd verse. It says, He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar by night from before the people. Now this speaks of God's faithfulness. He says, if you will come to me, I'm going to lead you. I'm going to guide you. Can you imagine in a desert of temperatures of 130 degrees, you got a cloud that is overshadowing you, telling you that I'm going to give you a cool breeze when you're standing in the midst of the heat. Can you imagine in the desert at night when there's no lights? We, we take it for granted because we got lights everywhere. In the desert where it'll be pitch dark, he's lighting up the whole path. He says, so, so by day and by night. In other words, you won't really be able to distinguish the day from the night. <laughs> It'll all be the same. There will be no nighttime in your life. If you are abiding in me, all of it will seem the same. Oh all of it. If you will have productive seasons. You will have to take the initiative to take the rest. Because it will all look the same. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? And so it, this is a proof of his faithfulness. It says that he did not take it away from him, neither day nor night. In other words, the day and the night look the same to him. God knew how to adjust the lenses. <laughs> So that his people could see clearly. That's a picture of his faithfulness today. He know how to adjust. You don't rest because you 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 don't have God's uh, 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 power upon you. You have to take the time. That's why he implemented a seven day rest. He says you could work all the time, but I need you to come on, rest. come on. I need you to replenish yourself and rest. Number two, it speaks of God's patience. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Here it is, Moses. Numbers chapter 14, having a discussion with God because God has watched the children of Israel uh, go through things and he supplied things over and over again. And now they are ungrateful and they are complaining because I don't know what happened is they had the mentality of Egypt when God had given them an intervention. So many of us have still got the mentality of bondage so much so that we cannot recognize where we are going because we keep seeing where we came from. Mm -hmm. And I, and I did a, a video about how the uh, devastation will dilute the destination, how the devastation, so many times we've been devastated and the, and the, and the devastation will dilute the destination. And so here's Moses having a conversation with, with God about the people that he just delivered because they're complaining so much about things that are happening because they still got the mindset of Egypt. The most difficult thing for most of us is this. We have been delivered but never healed. Mm -hmm. You got people right now that's been delivered from a, a situation physically, but in their mindset, they're still living the same. And so now Moses is always having the difficulty of telling the people that have been privy to God's promises and their mindset still living in Egypt that God said. And they're saying, how did, can God say if this is what I'm seeing? Mm -hmm. They could not get the mindset. So here it is. God has shown Israel, I'm patient. I've given you the cloud. Listen, my faithfulness is a pillar of cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night. Night. In other words, you won't be able to tell the night from the day. God is trying to tell you something. Don't listen to and don't look at what the world is going through right now. If you are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, abiding, if you are living there, you don't have to make the distinction between the two. You don't have to. You are just living what other people are saying. You are not experiencing what Egypt is experiencing. You are experiencing my goodness, but you are just speaking your, English, your bondage language. Time out for that. And so here it is. God's patient with them because here it is. Numbers chapter 14. Moses is telling them now, God, because the Bible says that his anger was waxed hot against these people that complain all the time. Mm -hmm. Complain. I always say this. It's interesting. As a little boy, uh, my parent used to tell me all the time, if you come in the house whining, 
They'll say, what are you crying about? And you can't give a, a definitive uh, answer to what you're crying about. And they say to, they used to say this, interesting, they say, well, let me give you something to cry about. Since you're going to cry, you need to have an issue to cry about. I think so many times we cry so much to God, and that's what we want to do. Perhaps God is saying, if you want to <laughs> cry and, and complain, let me give you something to My complain mm. about. I don't want to be that person. And so here it is, they're complaining, and Moses is striving with God. And now here's what Moses says to God. This is Numbers chapter 14, verse 14. It says, and they would tell the Egyptian, and they would tell it to the inhabitants of the land. For they have heard that thou art among this people, that thou, that, that thou Lord, art seen face to face by these people. Because mm -hmm. they are in the secret place. And that the cloud standeth over them and and thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire by night. He's telling God who is tired of people complaining. Moses is standing there saying, Lord, if you don't continue to be patient with these people, every enemy that saw you bring them out of that situation. Come on. Is going to think now you are not able to make them go to the final destination. So you need to reconsider some things, Lord. Mm. Please, please. And so the Lord says, mm. oh, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I don't ever want somebody to think that I'm not able to Come do. On. Even though the people were not perfect, God showed his patience. Mm. He says, okay, let's, let's roll with this. Let's take them across. Let's take them across. And so this pillow crowd first shows God's faithfulness. Then it shows God's patience. Let's deal with God's protection in the pillar of cloud. It's interesting because this is the secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place, meaning there's a holiest of holies. It's called secret place in the Moses narrative. And then he says, shall abide under the shadow. This pillar of cloud is them abiding under the shadow of protection that was constant day and night. That's why I got to live there Come and on. not just run there. Come on. I can't run when I'm in trouble. I've got to stay there. So here it is. Here's God's protection. God's protection, Exodus chapter 14. Verse number 24 and 25. Let's look at that real quick. Because this pillar won't leave. It's going to follow you day and night. If you follow it. Please hear me. I want to really teach on the, priest, the Levitical priesthood. Mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, what their responsibilities was. When they seen that cloud move. They were to get their stuff together. Go get that tent. Uproot that tent and say. Let's follow that cloud. Let's follow it. Uh, now, watch the cloud this. is moving. The shit. Watch this. Here it is. Here's the protection of God. This is Exodus mm -hmm. chapter 14. Watch this. Well, watch this. It says, and it came to pass. Then in the morning watch. Now here's the narrative because again, when you read a Psalms and you cannot uh, uh, determine the author because it has no heading, it is it is a rule that the author of the past Psalm is the author of the next Psalm. So again, everybody thought that this was a David narrative. So when we look at David, we're going to start putting his context in. But now we discover that it's Moses. So it's a whole different context. So the secret place is when God tells him to build the holies of holies. There's a secret place that you enter into. It's the place that you go by yourself. Self. Mm. <laughs> and you have to be qualified to go there. Many of you have put friends in trouble because you're trying to drag them in your secret place. They ain't supposed to be in there. They haven't gone through what you've gone through, so they can't go into the place that you're going in. This is an audience of one. He says, if you get in here, then you shall abide in the shadow. We're talking about the cloud, the pillar of cloud by day, which was the sunshine, the protection of them. And then the pillar of cloud by uh, fire by night. In other words, these people day and night was no different. God protected him. He lit up. We always, with our special abilities today, think, oh, it was lights out there. No, they're in a the desert. It's dark out there. But with the light of God, now, if you got the sun shining, this was Jesus following him. If you got the sun shining, then you can understand that we see day because the sun is shining. What's the difference? We got a sun. They had a sun that was shining brighter than the natural sun. So they day and night. Y'all follow me now. Get this. Now, God is saying you have the same thing. Now, here, here's his protection. Here it is. He's delivered these people out of the bondage of Egypt. Mm. It's a difficult thing when people have delivered, been delivered physically, but mentally you're still living in the same thing. My God. You're still there. You're still where you was. And now God has to stroll with you all the time because he's trying to give you something that your mind can't wrap around. I'm just nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody. Well, that's not your picture now. You are somebody because God says before you entered into your mother's womb, he knew exactly who you were. He knew you by name. He didn't just randomly come and say, oh, there goes somebody. No, he said, I planned you before you were planned. 
Hear me now. And so here's the protection of God. The pillar of cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night. Here it is. So, so God has delivered the people. They have come to the end of their road. Have you come to the end of your road? Now, here it is. They are facing this Red Sea. And the enemy called Pharaoh and all of his army, the abundages of their past is coming out to them. They have come to the end of the road. And now they're standing in position. They're looking at this sea, which is something that is insurmountable. How will I go across that? Because I don't have the tools or the resources to get across this. And I look back and my past is saying, if you don't go, then you're going to have to come back. Somebody's right there. If you don't go across, you got to come back. And so here it is, Moses, who talked to God already. You know how to talk to God. He's setting up and saying, oh, Lord, what are we going to do? Because this is the place that we've come to the end of all resources. Now, it's interesting what God says to him. God looks at him and says, why in the world are you crying to me? Why in the world? I think that's the conversation God is having with many people in this season. Because of the resources that they're in. Why in the world are you still complaining? Why in the world? So, so we've used this excuse that I don't know what to do. I ain't got He says to you like he tells Moses. You mean to tell me after all the things I've already done for you. You still going to sit back and say you waiting on me? Mm. You still going to sit back and say God ain't showed me nothing yet. I'm still waiting on God. Technically that is incorrect. I'm going to say technically that's incorrect. Because I don't want to say the other stuff. Technically that is incorrect. You waiting on God. God. So Moses is standing there after all the miracles that he faced already, saying, Lord, what we going to do? And, you know, we come to the end of our road. And, oh, when you come to the end of your journey, and the Lord says, I don't need to hear that. You sound like the people now. Listen to me. God says, stand up and part this sea. Now, when God tells you to stand up and do something, he is absolutely positively telling you that you got what it takes to part the sea. He's not Telling you to do something that he's not already invested in you. Yeah. He says, why are you praying to me? Part this sea. And so Moses get up and say, well, if God said part it, let's go with it. He gets up, makes some motion. Sometimes the only thing God needs you to do is take the initiative to get up and get in position. When you get up and get in position, doors start opening. Mm -hmm. I told you, doors now used to require keys. But now it causes calls for proximity. The door haven't opened because you haven't got close enough to. When the sensor senses that you are close enough, the doors come up. Here it is. He says, get in position and watch how things open. I'll say that again. Get in position and watch how things open. And so Moses is in position now and things open up. And the Bible says he gets almost at the end and he looks back and Pharaoh who is the oppressor uh -huh. sends in his army Come after mm -hmm. now listen to me God will use everything he needs to use to get you to uh, keep it moving you got to understand and interpretate what the enemy is so you won't be complaining about it and you'll embrace the moment God sent a mood upon Pharaoh, a heart in his heart, whatever you want to call it, to make sure that he stayed hot on the tail of these chosen people. Why? Because they these people are lazy, like mm -hmm. you and I are. He says, I'm going to send the enemy in there to make sure you don't stop in the middle of this sea, in the middle of this dilemma. I got to send him, I got to send him out there to make sure you don't stop. Mm. And so he sends him out there and you don't stop. But here's what's interesting about this text because this really blew my mind. Let me read it. This is called God's protection. If you will bust a move, he says, I got you. Now listen to this. Exodus 14, verse number 24 and 25. Watch this. Watch this. It says, And it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked into the host of the Egyptian through the pillar of cloud. <laughs> the pillar is still in the middle. You hear me? The pillar is in the middle of this dilemma. It says, And the Lord looked through the pillar. Uh, 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 let me read again. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked upon the host of the Egyptian through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled, listen, and troubled the host of the Egyptians. Watch this, 25th verse. Now watch this, God's protection. The pillar, the pillar, he that abided in the pillar. Watch this, the secret place, under the shadow. Watch this, 25th verse. Listen to what the 25th verse said. And took off their chariot wheels. That they drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us free, flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighting for them against the Egyptians. Mm. Now watch this. The protection came out of the cloud that it took the wheels off the chariot. Mm. This, this cloud that's over you is a cloud of protection. 
When the enemy comes against you, if you're abiding in the secret place under the shadow of the Almighty, the, the intentions of the enemy will be spoiled if they come through the anointing of God that is covering you, they got problems. <laughs> it says, it says, listen to this, listen to this. It says, it says, it says, it says, and he took off their chariot wheels. He took away the enemy's advantage. He took the advantage. You thought that they had more than you. They had the right to. This is the oppressor. This is the thing that says you cannot advance. This is the thing that says you will always be in the bondage to this. This is the thing that's telling you I'm coming to get you even though you have made some advancements. But you ain't, you have not made enough advancement, so I'm coming to pull you back into your old life. This is what this suggests. And now here it is, the Lord is looking through it. Listen, the Lord is seeing this, and he's taking the advantage from the one that took advantage. Mm. He's taking away the oppressor's right to hold you or to pull you back. He that dwelleth in a secret place. This is called full coverage assurance. The Bible says that he pulls away. He pulls away the wheels so that they drug it into the ground, setting them up because he says to them, he says, the enemy that you see today, mm -hmm. you will see no longer. Mm -hmm. In other words, in other words, the thing that oppress you because you understand who you are, you have gotten in the place of God. He says, the enemy that have oppressed you up until today will not be the enemy that oppresses you tomorrow if you can bust the move with the full coverage assurance. That if I do what God tells me to do, he's going to do what he said he'll do. Come on. Now watch this. Watch this. The second verse said, I will say of the Lord because of the experiences. Now I know that he's got me day and night. I will say of the Lord. Listen to what it says. I will say, Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in whom. Listen. In whom. I trust in whom I only got a few minutes. Now let me read this from the New Living Translation because it got identifies what this text is trying to say. Instead of I, I would say the Lord. The New Living Translation said, "This I declare." Uh -huh. You got to make some declarations because now you're confident that God is always there. You're abiding in the secret place. Now you're about to make some different declarations. These are not old bondage declarations. You're about let's see what God does. Let's see if. Like we're not going to pray, if it be your will. No longer, if it be your will. Because if you are abiding in the secret place of the Most High, you have your ear straight to his mouth. You know exactly what he wants. Here's the problem. You thought you were in a secret place. A secret place is a place that you can abide alone. Remember, there are people that you are taking to a secret place. If your secret place is uh, invaded by people, then it's not that much of a secret any longer. Somebody got a key to the place that is only supposed to be inhabited by you and God. Let me make that very claim, uh, clear. If it's a secret place that God wants and you got people that's got access to you, it's not a secret any longer. So now you're not receiving the benefits of a person being in secret. Mm -hmm. Hear me now. Because many people have invaded your space and told you you don't have the right or you are not, uh, what is it, qualified to be in a position where it's you and God. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm about to prophesy. And if you don't want to hear it, you better jump off now. I'm about to prophesy. God is about to eliminate those people that have stood in the way of you getting to the secret place. Because you have thought that their word was the word that is God's word. And God says in the next season, he's not going to allow that word to be the word. Mm -hmm. You're about to be set free from something that you thought freedom. that you could not be free from. This is your season of freedom. Listen to me. The oppressor, the one that oppressed that made you believe that this was your life. This was the end of your life. You're going to die here. God says there's a lie. He's about to set you free from the oppressor. He's going to bring you into the secret place. Yeah. Because one time in the presence of God is going to free you from the oppression of the person that thought that they had your life in Come their hands. Now watch this. Moses says this in verse 2. He says, I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my source. No man is my source. He is my source. God says to you, one step outside of that, you're going to realize that you got unlimited resources. Mm. You have limited yourself to one thing and one place and he says, that's been your problem. It has not been. I wouldn't give it to you there because you'll think that you're supposed to give it away 
way there. I had to move you before I could give you what I wanted to give you. Wow. Now watch this. Here's 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 uh, here's, here's Psalms 91 2 in the New Living Translation. This is what I need you to hear. Is this I declare about the Lord? I make this good. He alone. Mm -hmm. is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. In other words, I'm not letting other people convince me that they are my source, that I can't make it without them, that I never do it without them. I refuse to let them stand in that position. I would declare that he alone God alone, if man don't like it, you got a problem, not me, because God, I declare that God alone is my source. Please hear me. You're not blessed. I'm not blessed because you're around. You're blessed to be in my presence. Amen. In other words, I rely on other options. I've been relying on other options. And God says these options are called iffy options. Mm. You've been living with iffy options when God should be your only source. Only source. Everybody else in your space should be people that speak and tell you that you have a right to go to your secret place and talk to your daddy yourself. I always think about this in your career, that anytime we went to visit a child that had been separated from the father, and if she had to sit in the room to arbitrate the meeting, there was some inappropriate relationship between the father and the child. And when people tell you that they got to be involved in your secret sessions with your daddy, that means that there's an appropriate relationship between the parent and the person. And I don't want to dare say that God has been inappropriate yes. because I'm making people sit inside the session mm. of me and my God. And now they're influencing what my father can say to me. I got to go through you. You got to speak to you before it gets to me. God don't have grandchildren. Mm. Come on. <laughs> God don't have no grandkids. Now watch this. So 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 now watch this. Watch this. I gotta end this thing. It's already over, baby. Now watch this third verse says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snares of the fire. Mm. The snares of the fire and from the noisy pestilence. Now listen. Now that we discovered that this psalm is not a psalm of David, it's the Moses narrative. Mm -hmm. Now it's speaking something very clear. Mm -hmm. Now we can deal with the pestilence. Come on. <laughs> now we see. Now we see that this is a Moses narrative, not a David narrative. So the pestilence are actually what he's seen in Egypt when God was given plagues. Yeah. Uh, no, secret plagues is under the shadow. Now watch this. God sent ten plagues to Egypt, right? Here's what is happening. Here's what is happening. Here's what happened. To one group of people, it was a plague. Mm -hmm. To another group of people, same action from the same God, it was a wonder. Wonder. It was a wonder. Mm. And so right now, when we're living in this world right now, we're seeing things hit this world. To one set of people that don't know who their God is, it's a plague. Uh -huh. To the people that know their God, yeah. it's a wonder. It's mm. a wonder. Because nothing that he sends in plague will ever affect my house. People of Israel was living in a place called Goshen. Mm. They didn't even know about what was going on to the people. What? You are experiencing what? That's why the text says if you go on down, mm. a thousand shall fall at your side. Uh, Ten thousand come on. at your right come hand. Yeah. But if you're dwelling in the secret place, Only. if you're dwelling in the secret place, mm. you are under the shadow of the Almighty. You got a pillar of cloud. That when the plague is up ahead, the cloud goes around and say, that's not for you. <laughs> when you in the pillar of cloud, which is fire by night, when it gets dark in your life, it lights it up. So you don't have to worry about all of the pestilence, all of the things that comes to the fire of people's life. He says, I got you. This is not for you. Mm. You can disregard this. This is not your life. Thank this you. is not, Corona don't mean, that ain't yours. Mm. That's for people that don't know that they got a God. They got a protector. They got a, they got a they got a they got a God that has already given his life. By his stripes, as Isaiah says, 53, by his stripes, you are healed. This is for the people that already contracted something. He says you already healed. Mm -hmm. You better look up and live. Come on. You better look up and live. You better you better you better start declaring something. You better start declaring. I would say of the Lord, yes. he is my refuge. Come on. I would say, Lord, he is my forge. In other words, he covers me from all of this. He's, he's, you talking about putting the mask on? You already got a bubble. <laughs> you, you already got. You already got. You a couple. I need you to see this. This is not hocus pocus. This is for real. The enemy want to convince us that we don't live this. This is absolutely positively our life. This is what God said. Uh, uh, 
What time is it? What time? What time? What time is it? I got one minute. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, 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 the fourth verse said, He shall cover thee with his feathers. That's under the shadow. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. That's why I am so adamant about truth. You know me. That's why I have to come in and explain the scripture and redo the, use the laws and uh, hermeneutics to re explain scripture because in our life, it's been detrimental doctrine spoken to us because we didn't know any narrative, we didn't know any context. If you look at this just today, when you explain that this is not David's narrative, this is Moses' narrative, now you understand all of the things that come with this story. Mm -hmm. And now we understand that God is protecting us while we're in journey. See, this trip... This narrative of Moses is taking a people that were in bondage that was oppressed to a place called promise. Yes. And so in the midst of your journey, always the, the the trip to the palace, the road to the palace is a rough road. But God says, I have the power to take you there. I have the power to take you there. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night because you got the pillow cloud, a pillow of fire, nor the arrow that flies by day because... You got the covering of God. You are covered in this season. You are covered in. So now you got to declare, as the scriptures say, you got to declare, I am. Listen to me. I am not perfect. I am not perfect, but I trust not in me. I will trust in God alone. So when it says I declare about the Lord, verse two, he alone is my refuge. Yes. That means that you got to exclude yourself. Okay. You got to exclude yourself. Some of you think you are, 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 are great. Mm -hmm. You're a hero in your own eyes. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me. Let's not play that game this season. This is far beyond your power to produce. Yes. God wants you to trust him yes. for your very life. That's why when we read Acts chapter 17, it says this. In him I live and I move and I have my being. It's all about him. It's not about me. It's not about who I am and what I can produce. This is a season of freedom. If you're ready for freedom, God says, come into the secret place first. Come on in. He that abide there. Don't just run in trouble. This says you need to live there. Prepare yourself to live in the secret place because there's a lot of secret God wanted to reveal. And in the process, he wanted to give you secret service. Mm. They are not seen, but anytime trouble comes, secret service, come on the scene. And not seen, but any time you get in trouble, the secret service come on. It's the host of heaven. He is the host of heaven's army. Mm -hmm. There's angels that are ready right now, right now, right now. There are angels that are encamped around you. You don't have to call them in. They live at your house. They live at your house. They are encamped around you. That's what the scripture said. They are encamped around you. They are ready for the voice of his word. If you speak the word of God, if you learn truth, they are ready to jump into action at your command because they are commanded by the voice of God. You have been given the privilege to speak God's word. Mm. Speak his word and watch how the angels of God, of heaven's hope, come into actions ready to say. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much. For today's word. Thank you for the people that hear this word. Thank you so much for the blessing of this word. Thank you so much for you being our protection. You're covering us. You're keeping us from all hurt, all harm, all danger. This is a season that I thrive. No longer will I just be in survival mode, Lord. You allow me to go in thrive mode. And I believe by faith that if you said it, in you alone will I declare. You said it. You are my refuge. Only. You only are my refuge and I trust you to be my God in this season. Nothing shall overcome me because you are protecting me. In Jesus name. Amen. And listen to me tonight. We're in Dallas, Texas right now. We're in Dallas right now. Dallas tonight. Tonight we're at uh, the Grawler Park Branch Library. Grawler Park Branch Library. I'm to you the address right now. It's 2146 Guilford Street. 2146. Now you can go back and look because I think she's placed this in already. Mm -hmm. 21 code. Get them. 75235. Yeah. 75235. Tonight in Dallas, Texas. If you want some teaching that sets free, meet us tonight. God is setting free okay. on tonight. This is a night of freedom. Right here in Dallas, Texas. Again, this is the Grawler Park Branch Library. 2146 Guilford Street. Dallas, Texas. 75235. That's where we're going to be. 6.30 p.m. tonight. If you're in the Dallas area, I'm telling you, this is where you need to be. I got a message on tonight. 
Amen. And then tomorrow we'll be in Little Rock again. Bible study at Network of Believers. Uh, uh, 6, 20 p.m. It's called uh, uh, 110 Tuesday. One hour and 10 minutes of power, power, power. Tomorrow night back in Lord. Thank you guys so much. This is a blessed season. I got to get your mind to think. Uh, uh, when I say I got to get, I'm just doing what my part of getting you to see things again, looking again. I dare you. I dare you to look again. I dare you to look again with a different perspective and narrative. And watch how God bless you. You are blessed of the Lord. You and many of you that listen to me, I already know it. You're in, a, in, a, in, a, in an unusual predicament. And all of your thoughts and teachings have told you, you, know, you got to, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, rough it out. <laughs> rough it out until you can get yourself together. And when you get yourself together, come on to God and he's going to do something with you. That, that defies the whole concept. Yeah. That don't, that don't even make sense, really. I don't even know where we got this stuff from. It doesn't. It doesn't get, you, get it doesn't, yourself together. What you need. It for. doesn't. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. If you could do all that for yourself, what do you need a God for? Come on. Just think about it. If I could do all the things that they told me I needed to do on my own, what do I need? What do I need a savior for? What do I need a happy for? I don't need one. So tonight, I'm going to teach you on that as well. Come on out and, and be in presence. Be in presence with us tonight. In Dallas, Texas. Amen. Thank you guys so much for listening to us once again. And we consider it a privilege to even come into your space. You allow us in your space. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Appreciate you. Blessings up on all you guys. Thank you so much, Sarah, Queenie, uh, Queenie Griffin. Thank you. Blessings. Uh, Tammy, blessings on your blessing today. We're there in spirit with you, Tammy. Blessings up on blessings on blessings. Priscilla Jones. Uh, Raquel Bates, thank you so much. Melissa Morgan, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Avery Thompson, what's up, man? Professor Avery, what's going on, man? Uh, who was in it? Pastor Kenji Jones, blessings, man. Blessings to you. Uh, Mom, of course. Camille, blessings. Uh, Apostle John Harris, blessings to you, man. That's my brother there. Blessings, man. Uh, Kenya Williams, thank you. Kimberly Clark, uh, thank you so much. Kenya Williams. Kenya, huh? Kenya Williams. Kenya, uh, uh, Kenya Williams. Okay. You know Kenya Williams? Uh, uh, Pastor, Pastor Joel Pumphrey. I said it right. Pastor Joel. Uh, Sylvia Davis, blessings. Pastor Angela, blessings. Pastor Marissa, blessings. Katrina Robinson, blessings, blessings, blessings. Lisa Ray Lucas, blessings, blessings, blessings. Uh, uh, Bishop Fred Harris, thank you. Linda, thank you. Pastor Vaughn, thank you. Thank you, the guys, so much. All right. All right, all right. My sister Sheila, thank you so much. Jackie Dyer, thank you so much. Queenie, uh, uh, Evie, thank you so much. All right, I'm out of here. Thank you guys so, 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 so much. Uh, Namisha Hartwick, thank you for coming in late. <laughs> I'm just going to watch it all over. It's all good. All Love right. you, Misha. All right. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Are you done? I'm done. She's done, so I'm done. She let me talk today. Thank you so much for letting me talk to that. All right, we are out of here. Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings. You should be pulling them in. Pulling them in. Blessings on blessings. All right, thank you, Raquel. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Hello.